was afraid you wouldn't be. I am unironically pleased to see you. Hey there! Ah. Glad you're here! Hey, you. Hm. How are you, dearie? Hello there, darling. Wonderful to see you. Nice to see a new face. Hello there, friend. Hi, hi, hi! Yeah! Oh, hi. Why, hello there. Hi, y'all. In today's video, we're back in Palea, and I'm sharing highlights of the many things I've enjoyed about this game. So stay tuned. I enjoyed the Maji Market event, so much so that I did a video on it and will put the link in the description about my likes and dislikes about it. So I will go on to the next highlight. However, before I do, I want to give a couple shout outs to a few sites that really helped my gameplay in Palea. The first is the Weekly Wants. I can't love the site enough. It has all the characters of Palea and their weekly wants to give them gifts. I'll, it'll tell you gifts to boost your friendship with them and gifts to give them to get extra brownie points with them. So it'll, they'll have like what they like and what they love. This was extremely helpful because prior to finding the site, I'd go and give like let's say Kenietta a gift and she'd literally stick her nose up at it. Like the Paleans don't know the meaning of it's the thought that counts. <laughs> the second site is the Paleo Wiki page. Um, and this site gives you more information from quests to the villagers and all kinds of things you want to know about the, the, you know, what goes on in Palea. So both sites are extremely helpful. And I will link those descriptions. I'll, link, I'll put the links in the descriptions as well. So moving on to more of the main things I really liked about Palea. Besides the beauty and cozy charm of the game was the fishing. Yes, <laughs> you heard me right. For the life of me, I could never, or let's say it was extremely hard and really not worth the struggle of catching fish in games like Stardew Valley, Minecraft, and Dinkum. Yeah, in those games, Boog just, I would let him do it and, and Commander Riker do it. Anyone else could do those fishing things. I struggled with it. And so I wasn't really keen on fishing in Palea, uh, but I gave it a try and it was actually quite easy. And I was really elated that I could fish because this game I played by myself mainly. And so having to, I couldn't rely on other people to do the fishing. So that was, I was really glad that I could fish in this game and it was really easy. And not only that, but enjoyable. I enjoyed fishing in the various locations. Um, I did struggle at first on one of the quests, the fishing quests of finding unique rare fish. And I'd, I'd fish in the specific locations needed, but it wasn't until I realized that I needed to put my line into the inner bubbling circle uh, to be able to catch those uh, particular fish. And so once I got that concept, Oh, then it was a game changer. And it's been really fun seeing what type of fish I'll get based off of the bait used, the time of day, and the location. It's also a fun surprise uh, getting clues in bottles, old shipwrecked items. And it took me a while, but I was really excited fishing up the sushi recipe as I needed it to make uh, for one of the villagers. It was one of their things that they loved. So... Yeah, fishing, believe it or not, was one of the highlights that I really enjoyed. Another thing I really enjoyed about this game was the cooking. 
In this montage, I have some earlier cooking experiences, and if you look closely, you'll see the camera or video shaking as I'm stirring pots, rolling out things with the rolling pin, etc. <laughs> I was literally moving my mouse to manipulate the in-game cooking, not realizing I didn't have to put in so much effort. <laughs> I laughed so hard when I realized this and found it funny that I wasn't the only one who did this when they, they were new to cooking. So I'd often, as I cooked in the kitchen and would uh, burn things or things didn't come out um, or rushing around, I'd often think of Gordon Ramsay. If he could see my character, he'd probably be calling her a stupid paleo sandwich. <laughs> Or shaking his head as I literally moved the entire game around stirring things and rolling things out but I really did enjoy the cooking in this game there's lots of fun recipes to make in Palea in return these baked or cooked items make great gifts to give to the villagers to increase your friendship with them and their store and the storyline with them they are also good at keeping your energies up as you're out and about you'll want good foods to keep your energies going longer. Most of the recipes you can make yourself. However, there are some recipes like the celebration cake, chili oil dumplings, and the choppa masala, I think that are more involved. And if you're not quick enough with timing everything, you'll burn them. So it behooves you to have a friend help you out with those recipes. There was a big thing going on where you could earn a lot of money from making celebration sure. cakes and Let's having cake parties where each person brought an item from recipe from and from the recipe uh, and there. managed the food station associated with it and you could crank out a ton of cakes and everyone got the same amount of cakes even if all you brought were the sweet leaves for the recipe and did the frosting it didn't matter unfortunately i never uh, participated in a cake party myself. I was trying to build up a room on, on a wing of my house so that I could host one. But my hubby Faja Time and I made a few cakes uh, and we managed quite decently at them together. Ooh, we can make celebration cake, babe. All right, let's try it. Got it? Oh sweet. The other cool thing with cooking that I appreciated was that you didn't all have to be the same level or cooking skill or have the same recipes to uh you didn't have to have the same recipes open to cook with your uh friends or fellow gamers. As long as one of you had the recipe to start the process along with, you know, uh one of the food items, then you could start the recipe and then the other person that didn't have the recipe open or maybe not all of the food items, they could jump in where they could and you'd both receive the end results, which is really cool. Crap. So it this made cooking garlic. a lot of fun, especially with others. And I got the choppa, so. Now, I'm not one to go catch bugs in real life. I'm more of a screaming like a banshee and running away like a mad woman from them. <laughs> But in Palea, it was very satisfying catching bugs with bug bombs. There's lots of cool bugs from the ordinary to the extraordinary and rare that I enjoyed collecting. And the bug scout Ani is fun to interact with as well. He's like your, he's like your little brother or a nephew. His character is really endearing and fun to gift him bugs you've, that you've got and get, um, you'll get cool supplies from him too. He's really enthusiastic uh, when you give him a bug that you've caught, especially a rare one. The downside of the bug collecting is that it never failed that when I tried having as much open space and in inventory to go mining and collecting and doing other things as I mined stones, poof, from under a rock, a cool rare centipede would crawl out and I wouldn't have any bug bombs to catch it with. And I got kind of salty about that, not gonna lie. 
But another fun thing about bug, bug collecting is that you can make a lot of money doing it. I watched a video uh, when Paleo first came out on how this one guy showed you how to make how to take 200 bug bombs, enough food to sustain you, and enough repair kits to repair your uh, bug belt. And then nothing else in your inventory. And you'd go down to Bahari Bay, start out in the Beachcomber Cove, and work your way all over that area. And then there's like a little hole in the aqueduct where you can go to the other side of the aqueduct. And then there is... I think it's Coral Shores. I think, yeah, okay. Anyhow, you go over to um, Coral, you, and you comb that whole entire area over there. Only stopping at the repair station in Bahari Bay before repeating the whole process again uh, until you're out of bug bombs. You come away with your inventory filled up with crabs, uh, the blue paper lantern bugs, snails, corals, seashells, oysters, and it just, w filling all of that up, y you can make a lot of coins with that. But don't forget, it, it, not only does do you get a lot of money, but it helps you level up too. But don't forget to open up those oysters before selling them. Uh, you get meat that you can either cook and eat yourself or cook and sell. It, you, you make more money when you cook it. and then Or you can give them as uh, the meat as gifts. And then also some of the oysters will have either a white or green pearl in them sometimes. And that you can sell those or give those as gifts. So yeah, don't forget to open up those oysters. Next, the characters and their stories and quests. One of the endearing quests in this game was paying your respects. To me, it was really poignant, and at least for me in my gaming journey thus far, there aren't too many storylines that have touched my heart as this one did, and it leads me, it leads me to another highlight, the characters. I really feel like the devs really put a lot of their heart and souls into creating the into creating the various townsfolk of Palea that you encounter on various quests. Each character had their own dreams and skills that made you seek them out, but as your friendship with them evolved, you learned more of their struggles and insecurities too, with some quests not only helping you obtain items you needed, but help them too. I found myself sympathetic sympathizing and empathizing with them like Jenna's struggle to fit in and why she always why she was always off in the library or out you know with her nose buried in books um, trying to decipher things you know but she was always on the periphery really not intermingling there's a reason to it and I identified with that but also two characters in particular Hodari and Has I'm gonna put mispronounce his name, Hassian or Hassian, both to me came off quite prickly. I found myself getting quite irked and not really wanting to build my friendships with either of them. With Hodari sometimes saying things, like with the, some of the things he said really were off-putting to me. I'm like, if, he, if it was real life, I'd probably tell him off. And a, a Cigarro Cactus would be a more cuddly than Hassian. <laughs> But as you learned and engaged with them, you realized that they aren't as bad as they may want you to think that they are. Hodari is a single father who's concerned about his daughter, Najuma, and Hassian has a lot of great principles and ethics, and when you find out that he likes someone but is too shy to say something to them, it's a game changer. At least it was for me, and I kind of wanted to see that storyline played, played out where he opens up about his feelings for that special someone. I personally could see that lovely person having feelings and liking him back and being open to having a relationship with him. I noticed on many occasions that this person that Hassian liked hung out in a spot that he hangs around in. It seems kind of like wait, that they're waiting for him. So it would be really cool if we as players didn't pursue a romance with him and that 
person that he liked and see their relationship bloom. Or since you can have up to two romances in Palea and there's nothing wrong with it um, in that world, if you did pursue a relationship with one of them or both of them, but they would still have the opportunity to be together too. I'd like to see that played out. But anyhow, that leads me into the next highlight of what I enjoyed about this game. Finding a ship quest. So finding a ship quest, you're first given this quest from Eshi, and you don't know what a ship is. And so not knowing, I asked her to be, to be it, where she promptly rejected me and explained the meaning of a ship. You've got to earn the trust of an adult villager. And to me, it reminded me of having a sponsor or an advocate, someone that vouches for your character and that makes sense as you're in a new place, a new home, and you need someone from that place that you're trying to become a citizen of to vouch for you. Someone, and also to have someone trust you so that you can blend into their new community. To find a ship, you go through various levels of friendship with who you choose to be your ship. Now, unlike romances, where you can have two romances with the villagers at a time, you only get one ship. Your character doesn't have to be romantically involved with them either for them to be your ship. But it does take a lot of time doing friendship quests. I think if I recall, you need to have your friendship built up to at least level four to ask them. It was also fun to read in the official Palea server people's reasons for who they chose to be their ship. I honestly don't think there's a wrong choice with any of them. For me, I chose the endearing but flirtatious cook, Reth. I was doing the romance storyline with, with his character, and for a split second, when I understood the importance and meaning of a ship, I thought of having Badru or his wife Dalila to be my ship, as I adored them and their family. However, as Reth's character opened up more and more, as and the storylines in both the friendship and romance continued, I found out that Reth, because of choices he made, which he doesn't really disclose to a lot of people, has caused the community to look down on him and judge him erroneously. They underestimate him and in a way don't put a lot of value on him because of his choices. I really identified with that and have felt very underestimated throughout my life and learning that Reth was going through that, it made me choose him to be my ship to show not only him but the townsfolk that he was of worth and value and that I didn't underestimate him by asking a big responsibility of him being my ship, that I believed in him. We all need people that believe in us, and it's amazing how a simple belief or non-belief in another person can really have an impact. So knowing his reasons not only led me to have him be my ship, but also see to the end the romance storyline. Up to when I last played, I was also increasing my friendship with the bewitching uh, T Tamala to be able to start romancing her too. The finding a ship quest once completed Farewell. up to when I last played was the culmination of the game. Not sure if that still holds up or not, but while there's still new things coming out and new characters and events, that was the main quest of the game from what I understood and how they, and how they completed that quest. The finale of it was quite beautiful and special. My only regret was that I didn't give the finale of that quest the time it deserved to really take in all the details mm. and event of it. I rushed through it unbeknownst that it would turn out to be such a special occasion that you really want to enjoy. So when you're doing that quest and you go to meet Eshi for the final time to go to the event, oh. Make sure you give yourself enough time to enjoy it all. Esh told me to go find my ship. I was afraid to talk to anyone else for fear that by talking to another townsperson, they'd become my ship and not Reth. So not sure if that would have happened or not. Uh, 
and also to be honest where he was placed in the event as I didn't immediately see him as I walked through Eshi's mansion I was starting to wonder if he'd show up um, and be there or not um, and having the townsfolk be right about him. So I was a little nervous there too, so I was kind of hyper-focused on those two things. But luckily, Reth didn't disappoint. A few things, a few other things I loved about my Palea journey was coming across the treasure chests. They were always fun. I love to see that some of them were kind of in harder locations. It, they weren't immediately easy just to, oh, hey, there's a chest. You, some of them you had to really work at figuring out how you're going to, you know, maybe get across to uh, a, one of them on a pillar and uh, one of them on an island and just, it, yeah, you had to work for them and, and think it through. And it, it took a couple of attempts to get it. And so getting the, the loot in the treasure chest was very satisfying. Also, last but not least, the hang gliding. Oh, loved hang gliding in this game. It was so fun. Now, some of the things that I didn't necessarily care for or like, while the cozy aspect and not having to worry about looking over your shoulder for an aggroed monster or villain to be popping up as you mind or cut down trees, etc., were nice when you just wanted to chill out in the game. For me, it kind of got monotonous not having that option. It would have been nice to have the Temple of the Flames quest have a villain or monster where you had to fight with your bow and with your bow and arrow. While it's in early access still, Hussian's mom, Sifu, talks about making swords and shields, and I hope that eventually she does hook you up with weapons that you can use those weapons on monsters to fight. It gets a little boring just going out after magical creatures, in my opinion. That's just me. The other thing that I wasn't a fan of was that while the game wanted you to co-op and work together with people in cases of cutting down the flow trees, for instance, and making some of the higher end foods, I don't like to be forced to have to work together if I'm not in the mood. Uh, to wait around after leaving a comment in chat of where you're at, where there's a flow tree and you're waiting for anyone to come over and help you. And if no one shows up, then you can't knock down that flow tree by yourself. And that gets on my nerves. <laughs> or hunting down magical creatures, you, uh, you need a teamwork. And sometimes I just didn't want to rely on others. <clears throat> It is, a, it is fun when you and your friends can join and all play together and go out hunting and chopping down the flow trees and cooking, doing the cooking, various high-end cooking things and some of the other quests. But it's not fun when you're all doing different quests. And I don't know, that's just me as a gamer. Uh, I like to do the same quest, so, you, you know. But anyhow, that's me. The other thing I wasn't a fan of was that playing this game felt FOMO a bit, you know, the fear of missing out. For instance, with the Maji Market event and the cool autumn things, I felt that if I didn't go on and play and, you know, uh, daily or hurry and binge on these events, I would miss out uh, on the cool items from the market or from the event. I felt that the prices to make things and buy things are quite ridiculously overpriced to where it kind of encourages you, encourages you to game binge, earning enough cash, and just when you think you have enough coins saved up for an addition to your house or to get some kind of big item that you've been working towards, boom, a new event for limited time comes around and you only have so much time to get the items at that event. So your house progress or whatever item you want wanted that you finally saved up for gets pushed aside so you can get those things. So you're constantly grinding for coins and that gets old for me. Um, <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that feeling, feeling that way and it became a turn off for me. The two of the gripes, bigger gripes that I had about this game, and to be fair, I don't know if they've changed this or not, but when I played this, you could 
only have up to eight storage chests on your land and you couldn't organize it other than having a locked one. It all went into the chests uh, without any organization where you couldn't have a chest just for food and one just for like wood and stone. No, it all went into one lump thing and, and I don't like that. I like to be more organized. And it also, they kind of discouraged loot horse and I'm a big loot horse. So I didn't like that either. So uh, yeah, with the limiting of eight, you know, and, and stuff, they encouraged you to, oh, just, you know, share and get, you know, da da da. And you can always get more. <laughs> the other, the other big gripe that I didn't like. Oh, also, let me go back really quick. <clears throat> I try to find a loophole with the chest of putting a chest on another land that you could open up after maxing out the first one, but nope, denied <laughs> that the chest that you did put on the second plot of land or the second thing that you opened up, it had all the other stuff, like it, it carried over. It wasn't like a brand new chest that you could put more stuff on because I was hoping to add more more loot to that one and materials and all so yeah that was frustrating the second big bigger gripe i had was that along with the limit of storage chests you could only have a maximum of buildings on your land and little things like a porch and a fireplace and a tent all counted as a building piece and that really was a bummer in designing your land i really hope they've changed that or eventually changed that aspect of that. In closing, I want to thank the audience that tuned in for Paleo. One of my best videos, in my opinion, is the Maji Market one. I had a lot of fun making that video and grew a lot as a content creator. I may revisit Paleo in the future, but it will probably be just to update on things like if I ever complete Zeki's obstacle course and my completed house, etc. But moving forward, my primary focus will be on Deep Rock Galactic, Conan, Icarus, and Valheim, in addition to Planet Coaster for the time being. I sincerely appreciate your support and I hope that you join me as I continue my adventures in gaming. Until the next video, peace, love, and blessed be. Bye, y'all.